Network presents Fighting Illini Football. Today's match at Pitts, the University of Illinois, against the Wolverines of Michigan. Today's game is brought to you by Budweiser. Each would age that distinctively clean, crisp taste that said, Budweiser the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. And by the Illinois State Lottery. A lot of people have already won millions playing Lotto. You could be next. Lotto, it's a big deal. I'm Will Tiemann with Jim Grabowski. And this week has been a week that we've heard and seen a lot said and written about the Illinois offense and the Michigan defense. But, Jim, that might not be a deciding factor when it's all said and done. Well, I don't think that's the key to the ball game. It's given that Michigan has a great defense. The important part, I think, for Illinois is how well their defense plays. They must hold the Michigan offense, I believe, to under 17 points if we have any hope of victory. On the other side of the coin, I think Michigan is a much better football team than we've seen the last couple of years, primarily because of their quarterback, Jim Harbaugh. He can throw the football. And we'll be back with more in just a moment. A Michigan 6-1, and one, but most important 3-1 in the Big Ten. The Illini 4-3, and three, but even more important, playing well of late, 3-1 and one in the Big Ten. And there's a situation where the records in the Big Ten are the one that counts, and this game could be a great one. Oh, I think it will be a good game. If you look in the past history over the last five years, it's been an excellent football game. As we said earlier, a key, key game for both teams. Three and one. If they have any hopes to win the conference championship, you have to win today. A final question, Jim, before kickoff. Illinois came out today in white pants. They've changed to blue. They're coming out as a commitment to win the game. Uh, in the big scope of things, does that make a big difference to a player? Well, it depends on how it reacts on their mind. A psychological factor. If that helps, they'll take any advantage you get to dig and beat Michigan. If it helps, great. And we'll be back with the opening kickoff after these words from your local station. It's a day at Champagne that's important for both teams, and there has been a lot of talk about the offense and the defense, and Jim, it's a study in contrast as far as the Big Ten numbers go for the season. Well, you look at those amazing defensive statistics for the Michigan Wolverines, giving up only 8.2 points a ball game. That's, that's just great defense. The one thing those figures do not indicate is the fact that is the fact that Illinois has played much better of late, while Michigan has not played as well of late. Ready to kick off is Rick Sukowitz, and he has been one of these kickers who, barefoot as you can see, and I've often wondered how somebody can kick a cold football on a cool day in the Midwest. I've never quite understood that, Will. I, I have no idea. <laughs> Sukowitz to kick off. Back deep will be Keith, Keith Jones. And this game is underway. Jones at the eight-yard line. Nice return, and that's where the line I will take over. First down and ten to open up the first offensive possession of this game. You can see there, there's the offensive backfield. First, the starter, Jack Prudeau, Thomas Rooks, and Ray Wilson. Normal backfield, as we see in every ball game this year. And Wilson, Pierce, and Caboso, good receivers. And a line of Dennis Jurigas, Scully, Kehoe, and Ward, a line that really has begun to find itself. And, and a line that will be tested today. This is a fine defensive uh, front by Michigan. Very, very quick. So the offensive line of Illinois will have to be alert. Well, the game's a little slow getting underway. Jack Trudeau, as you see there, number 10 for the line. I'm, has been a man who was maligned early in the campaign, but now all of a sudden he's on a streak of consistency. And as he gets consistent, the line starts to win. First and ten, Trudeau brings him out of the 24-yard line, and he's back to pass. A lot of time. Almost picked off. Tony Gant just about had it. That would have been a fast way to wipe out a streak of 178 attempts for that interception. That was almost the end of the streak. It seemed like Jack really ran away from his protection, ran up to a tackler. He was hit just as he released the ball, threw a duck up in the air. Second down and 10, the ball, the 24-yard line. Mester, Harris, and Hammerstein. These guys are good. Linebacking core, Scarcelli, Mallory, Moeller, Akers. This is the number one defense in the country for most of the campaign. Number two in total defense right now for Michigan. That's Rooks up the middle. So it's going to bring up a third down situation for the Illinois right off the bat. Michigan has been the kind of a team that has not given up the big play. And some of their philosophy, I understand, Jim, is that if they can make a team have a 10 to 12 to 14 play drive, they'll self-destruct. That's, that's a philosophy of many defensive coaches, and it's a good philosophy. So field position is so important in this ballgame. 
Rivers, Gann, Hicks, and Cochran evenly distribute among themselves a lot of pass interceptions. The Michigan defense has picked off 16 opposing aerials this campaign, and that's a very, very respectable number. It is third down and eight, the first third down situation of the game for Illinois. And instead of throwing it, it's Thomas Brooks on the ground, and it doesn't work. So with that, Chad Little will have to come in and punt it away. Well, it looks like Coach Mike White wants to make the Michigan Wolverines aware of the running game. Not very successful in this first series. Little to punt. Back deep now for Michigan. You can see the averages for Chad Little. Eric Campbell. Campbell suffered a shoulder separation earlier in the season. He's a backup wide receiver and a speedster. He'll be back at about the 30. Little punting when it's all said and done from about his 15-yard line. He's the best punter in the Big Ten, by the way. A nice high kick. On the run. Good job by Keith Jones. And Michigan takes over first and 10 on the 39-yard line. Any surprises, Jim, on the opening set of plays for Illinois? Well, I guess if there was any surprise at all is that they ran the ball twice out of their three downs. Jim Harbaugh, the quarterback, coming off his best game as a passer. Gerald White a converted tailback. Jamie Morris, awfully small but extremely quick. Paul Yoki should 6'8", the biggest receiver in the Big Ten. John Polisar, a good wide receiver. And Eric Caddis, a high percentage touchdown receiving tight end. That's Morris up the middle, no go. Ron Baum is making a start after coming back off the injured list. And, and Willie looks like he's starting off where he left off after being injured in the Southern Illinois game. He was a leading tackler against UNC. He had a fine game against Southern Illinois. Came back off the injury in the first tackle of the ball game. The offensive line in Michigan is rebuilt for the most part. They've had some injuries there. Those injuries have come and gone, and they've had a couple games under their belts, and they're back intact. It is now second down and eight. The ball on the 42-yard line. Our ball, look out. Great defensive play by Alex Gibson, his third quarterback sack of the season. This may be a defensive struggle, as we said before the ball game. The Illini defense must have their finest ball game if they expect to win. These four gentlemen here could be the ball game. Davis, Baum, Tegan Tiller, and Gibson, they really have got to play well to win. Sebring back off the injured list to start. Taggart and Gleamy. It's a talented group. Avery, but a change. Craig Swope moves from strong safety to safety. Ed White gets a start, and the cornerbacks stay the same. It is third down and 17. Harbaugh to pass. All kinds of time. It'll be complete to Caddis, but not enough for a first down as Rob Gleamy and Todd Avery make the stop. And real quick here before the Michigan punt, Jim, what does it mean when you take an All-American strong safety and move him in position? Well, he was a weak safety for the first two years here at, at Illinois, so he's going back to an, a familiar position. It shouldn't make much difference. What about the other side of the coin, the other people? Well, Ed White has also played some uh, free safety, so again, it shouldn't make much difference. Robbins the punt. Usher at the 18. Usher down to about the 23-yard line. And for the second time in this game, Illinois will have it. First down and 10. The first offensive possession, not much. A run, a sack. And a run, and that pretty much tells the story. So both teams have had what I would call their trial offense. <laughs> and maybe we'll settle into something here. We used to call that the cha-cha offense. One, two, three, kick. <laughs> I should write that down. That's, uh, if you'll notice here, if you just joined us, Illinois came out in white pants. They've now changed the blue as a sign of commitment to win. Time will tell. First and ten. On the carry, Ray Wilson. Wilson picks up four or five before he's finally brought down by Jim Scarcelli. A little bit of a hole. If he could have just maintained his balance, he may have picked up the first down. The one thing that looks good, they're going for the yards. They're running north and south. Clock running at 10.45 to go here at Memorial Stadium. We've had some beautiful days here this fall, but this one is sort of overcast. It's windy, and the Illini are going 
against the wind, and that might be a factor in this first quarter as well as the fourth. Jack Trudeau back to pass. Little flare pass to Thomas Rooks. Rooks up to about the 33-yard line. Nice percentage pass that time, and on the stop, Ivan Hicks. Thomas Rooks, surprisingly enough, is one of the top receivers in the country. We'll see Jack now on a rollout to the left side of the field. Looking for Rooks on a flat pattern. Hits him in stride. Rooks going for the first down. Comes up just short. Makes a third down and one. Well, you may see a lot of sprint out action by Thomas, uh, by Jack Trudeau. Get away from that fine rush that the Michigan Wolverines have. You know, coming into this ballgame, they've sacked the quarterback 26 times. We're having a little measurement now. Jack says, let me check it out. I want you guys to bring in the chains. I think we're closer than you think. Well, let's see what they say. A little bit short. Yeah, you see it right there, six inches. You should immediately four to go here as David Williams brings in a play from the sidelines. That's coach Mike White. And Jack Trudeau is a man who really has been on his game of late. Last couple of games this season, the quarterback sneak has been the play of the day in this situation. On third down this season, overall, Illinois has only rushed 35% of the time. Third and inches. There's the quarterback sneak. And it does look like an Illinois first down, the first breather team in this game. Jack goes over their All-American candidate, right guard Jim Jariga, and they pick up the first down. Jack Trudeau came into this game. You'll see it right there, the block by 71, Jariga. On number 56, the nose guard, Billy Harris. And when you block like that, you'll get the first down. It's first and 10, it's on the 34-yard line. Out of time to throw. Williams. Once again, though, will sprint out. They really respect the rush of the Wolverines, so they're sprinting out away from them. And Jack here, you'll see, has all kinds of time to throw the ball. He's looking now as probably his second or third receiver, which is David Williams crossing over. And it looks like another first down. And with that attempt, with that interception, first and ten, Illinois. Jack Trudeau is now tied. Damon Allen of Cal State Fullerton for a second on the all-time NCAA list in that category. Trudeau to pass again. This time he's going to hang on to it. Now he takes the fight into Wolverine territory. We've got our first flag of the game. Well, we'll see what it is. Billy Harris on the stop for Michigan. 257, six foot. Billy Harris is an awfully mobile middle guard for Michigan. Well, it looks like the way the coaches, the Illini coaches are arguing, that's it. A clip against Illinois. Well, penalties have not been the ally for Illinois, as you can see. But Michigan, even though their turnover ratio is excellent, one of the best in the country. They too have been penalized more than one might think. Well, there's an example, Will, of self-destructing. We look like we're getting some semblance of a drive. Two first downs, pretty good pickup on your first and 10 situation. Instead of second down and short yards, now we have first down and 20 yards, 18 yards to go. 9-12 remaining in the first quarter, David Williams, who now has to average 11 grabs a game to become the all-time leading receiver in NCAA history. Brings in a play to Jack Trudeau on first down and 18 to go. The ball resting just past the 36-yard line in the Illini territory. It's the shuttle pass, and that's Rooks to about the 45-yard line. Stopping a play made by Andy Moore. If some of these names sound like football coaches, it's because they are. Moeller. Here we'll see the shuffle pass again to Thomas Rooks. But you know, you, you could see the Wolverines really reacted well to it. They stopped him for an eight-yard gain, but that's a, a very important eight-yard gain. Andy Moeller, the top tackler on the Michigan team, is the son of former Illinois head coach and now assistant head coach and defensive coordinator of Michigan, Gary Moeller. On second down, Illinois elects to keep it on the ground. Moeller and Garland Rivers make the stop on the carry, Ray Wilson. 
Once again, though, pretty good blocking by the offensive line of Illinois. Here's Ray Wilson being led again by Jim Jeriga. Good block on Andy Muller, but Muller reacts well off the block and makes the tackle. Wilson averaging about four yards a carry this year. Ray Wilson, I think, and Stephen Pierce have been the two nice surprises offensively this year for Illinois. Bo Schembechler, as one said, not a folk hero in Champaign. <laughs> to say the least. Does he always wear sunglasses in the shadows? Always. Third down and three. Against the flow. Anthony Williams. Nice move by Williams. The reserve tight end gets that 6-4 frame going. Finally, Tony Gann makes the stop. Oh, what a fine call. Bootleg action. We'll see it right here. Misdirection. Jack rolling out now, looking to the tight end. Anthony Williams all alone. Good feet, stays in bounds. Boy, big first down. And he doesn't want to go down. That's only the eighth pass he's caught this year, so he doesn't get many chances. He wants to make the most of it. And he stays in the game. First and 10. So the line I overcome the clipping penalty. Trudeau. That's Rooks. Picks up three or four the hard way. That man he got by an awful good one. Brad Cochran, the quarterback, All-American candidate for Michigan. First down plays Wilts are so important against a team like Michigan. Again, sprint out. Jack looking downfield. Block out in front by Ray Wilson. A good block. Goes to the short man, Thomas Rooks. Struggles for three yards. Illinois has two tight ends in, and they have had for a while. Does that surprise you? No, not at all. It'll balance out that offense. To those numbers, again, quite respectable. It is second down and seven. The shuttle pass to Rooks. It's the first down. Jim Sparcelli tripped him up, but barely. I'll tell you, Will, it's so confusing for that outside linebacker or the defensive tackle who's ever got the, the penetration here. He's getting in free, and all of a sudden, he's, oh, the ball's being passed off to the inside man, Rooks, and Rooks struggles again for that first down. Good offensive drive going for the Illini. Again, poise is important. No mistakes. I'm sure that Jack is saying in the huddle, no mistakes, guys. We're moving the ball. On first down, the Illini have passed four out of five times. Trudeau has nobody open. Loose football. The Wolverines get it back. Hicks has it for Michigan. It just literally popped right into his hands. We'll see Jack again sprinting out. This time it's from behind. He decides he's going to run with the ball, but he doesn't tuck it in. Now right there, the hit from behind jars the ball loose. That looked like Scarcelli right into the hands of Ivan Hicks. Well, it's a tough way to stop a drive, but that's one of the reasons why Michigan is one of the best defenses in the country. Back with more line to go in this first quarter of play. Mike Side will team with Jim Grabowski. The Illini had a great march going, a fumble and good defense combination. Michigan has it back, first and 10 to the 24. Jim Harbaugh coming off his best game as a passer against Indiana, threw for 283 yards. He's a good one. John Colasar is the man you see in motion there. That's a fake to the tailback Morris. Nice reception by Phil. Paul Jokic will that big, big split end of the Michigan Wolverines. Six feet eight, 240 pounds. Again, looks like both teams are having the rollout as part of their game plan. Going to Jokic, he's got a corner pattern. He is wide open. Lance Harkey, number nine in pursuit, but too much cushion. Jokic has now extended this string of games where he's caught a pass to 12 straight. Can you imagine a 6'8 target? Harbaugh's going to keep it. It's down about the 37-yard line before Lance Harkey makes the stop. Well, that's the play that can kill the Illini defense. We've never been successful stopping the option. Now, Jim Harbaugh is not a great runner as a quarterback, but he does this well. He fakes the bitch. Not much of a fake, but he's keeping it all the way. Now, really good reaction back to the ball. That's number nine, Lance Harkey. His man is the pitch man, but once Harbaugh turned it up, he reacted well and make a shoestring tackle. A lot of people don't mention the fact that Michigan's offense is not what people might think. 
They have the quarterback, which Jim mentioned, who's throwing the ball. He runs the option. He has two good running backs behind him. So unlike many teams that can do one thing well, they can do several things pretty well. Yeah, they're very well balanced on their offensive attack. First down and 10 for Michigan. Long count by Harbaugh. Gerald White on his first carry of the game, stopped by Alex Gibson. You see the offensive thinking there. They go wide, they throw the ball on a rollout, then go to the option. Now to make the Illini conscious of the interior that come with their fullback, Gerald White up the middle. Second down and seven. Clock running at 5.18 to go in this first quarter. Neither team has scored yet. Illinois had a good drive, go awry with a fumble. And since that time, Michigan has marched the ball right back down. Harbaugh, big rush. Great job that time by Jay Lynch. He blew in there from Never Never Land. A blitz from the outside, man, Jay Lynch. The back saw him, but saw him late. Could not come back for the block, and he has the big sack. Let's see it right here. A fake to, you see Jamie Morris trying to come back. He gets a piece of Lynch, but Lynch goes right over him and makes the sack. Good play by Jay Lynch, number 19. That's what's wrong with having a 5-7 man block for you. Not too tough to go over the top of. Well, I'll tell you, when you're, you're the fake man on a play action, it's tough to get back to the, your blocking assignment. And that time, Jamie Morris just slipped and could not make the block. This will only be the second, third down play Michigan has had in this game. Harbaugh, under pressure. He's got to get 17. Not going to get it. Lance Harkey on the stop for Illinois. And is that guy happy or what? Well, you can see that this Illini team is fired up. The defense out here knows it's their ball game to win or lose. Good pressure on Harbaugh. He's now running. Where can he go, folks? Not much because now he sees only blue jerseys. Harkey comes up number nine to make the tackle. Darrell Usher back now for Illinois, back to the 10-yard line. Monty Robbins in the punt. First and 20 for Illinois. Jim, do you think that the fumble might have some kind of side effect? coming back into the second offensive possession, or third, I should say, of this quarter. Well, you would hope is if you were the Illini coaches, they should make them more determined. They have to have gained some confidence in that last series because they did move the ball effectively. But beware, one of the fine things that Michigan does defensively is adjust to the offensive patterns of the other team. And that wraps up the first quarter of play. And at the end of the first quarter, the score is Illinois nothing and Michigan nothing. Ironically, though, look at that. Michigan isn't too far behind in passing. What's the world coming to? Trudeau, to Rooks, not there. Greg Land won the defense that time for Michigan. The key, though, you saw a looping middle linebacker in Doug and uh, Mike Mallory, and I think Jack read him because he, Mallory, as he was blitzing, came off the blitz to take Rooks out on the flare pattern. Jack had to throw the ball high, and it's an incompletion. Second down and 10 at 7.07 to go here in this first half of play. Welcome to Champaign on an exciting Saturday between two great football teams. Trudeau to pass. That's Anthony Williams. Boy, takes a lot to get him down. Brad Cochran on the stop. And right now, David Williams is four away, or I should say, Jack Trudeau is four away from becoming the leader in NCAA passing attempts without interception. And a good read that time by Jack. He wanted to go deep on a turn-in. He got off the turn-in, went to the short man, Anthony Williams, and picks up eight, seven yards. Jack Trudeau launched 10 interceptions in 120 attempts in the first half of the games. And now he's 170-some without an interception. And it's third and three, which is most important. Illinois, three out of five in conversions this afternoon. Big rush. Whoa! That streak almost came to an end. That's twice it almost came to an end. Number 33, outside linebacker, the Wolverine, Jeff Akers, almost picked the ball off. The Jack did throw into a crowd. There were two white jerseys and only one blue one. 
Chad Little to punt once again. We've seen him a season four in this first half. Harry Campbell back to return. Chad Little. Homegrown. The whole kicking team is homegrown, basically. Chris White from Champaign. Chad Little from Champaign. Punting from about the 15. Big rush. Nice kick. Campbell at about the 25. And, whoa, look at Keith Jones. That's a running back. That's Where a, do running backs make those tackles? That's a running back who likes to hit. You see, when he carries the football, he doesn't avoid tacklers, so I think he likes the contact. First and ten for Michigan. Something that we might talk about now, Mike Gillette and Chris White are two of the finer place kickers in all of college football, and they may be the factor in this game. Well, it really looks like it. they will be a big factor if we ever get down close enough to have a field goal. But it, both teams have always started in not good field position, so it's really getting to be a game inside the 30-yard lines. 6.08 to go in this first half of play. No score, nothing, nothing. Jamie Morris on the carry. Guy Tiefenteller slows him, and then everybody else stops him. Or so it appears. Something we may not have seen there, but a good job by Alec Gibson taking on the trap blocker. We'll see it here. It's a little misdirection, counter play to Jamie Morris, takes it in. And there's Guy Tiefenteller making the hit. But the little guy, Jamie Morris, doesn't want to go down on the first stop. 5'7", 175-pound sophomore, coming off his best game last week. Carried the ball 24 times for 179 yards. Second down, five. John Colasar in motion for the Wolverines. Up the middle, and not much up the middle. Stop on the play made by Jay Lynch. That time, Gerald White just couldn't get on track. And it was a big stop because Gerald White tried to take it to the outside. It was open. We'll see here the dive play to the fullback. He takes it to the outside, but Jay Lynch manages to hang on and stop him for a short game. And he beat a good man that time, the tackle Clay Miller at 6'4", 264. That time, speed was better than size. Third down and five for Michigan. The Wolverines, two out of five in conversion attempts in this game when it's been third down. And every time it's been this a pass to Jokic. This time it doesn't work. There's a trend there. There was a time when it seemed like it was always to go to Williams, and so far in this game it's been hardball to Jokic. And once again, the fans here at Illinois are appreciative of this defense. Much maligned throughout this campaign in 1985, but they have come to play today. Darrell Usher back to field the punt of Monty Robbins. Where is Great Bend, Kansas? Have you ever been there? Never. We might not ever go there either. Usher, fair catch. In traffic at the 42. Look out. I don't believe that one. Did you see that? I missed it. But I'll tell you... Darrell Usher is showing once again his ability as a punt returner. It was not returned, but he ran into the crowd, showed confidence in his ability to hang on to the football. A short punt, he fielded it the way a punt return man should. Bob Perryman, the reserve fullback, took a swipe right in front of the official and no flag. First and 10, the ball's at the 43-yard line. Jack Trudeau brings him out. got everybody spread out. And that's Thomas Brooks on the carry. Andy Moeller, the team's top tackler, makes the stop. I've often wondered, Jim, when you have a team full of good athletes who grew up when their fathers were coaches, it's got to be a plus, at least understanding the game, do you think? Oh, certainly understanding the game. The bad part about it is your father probably has hardly ever gotten to see you play. That's true. Second down and eight. About 50-50 this game for Illinois, running and passing on second down. Balls at the 45-yard line. Trudeau. Cox and fires. Wyckoff to the 44. That should be the line I first down. And on Andy Moeller. On the stop with help from Garland Rivers. 
Wyckoff really doesn't receive it all that much. Here's Jack on the drop back. Excellent job of coming off his primary receivers, going to his safety valve out there along the sideline. Eric Wyckoff, he picks up the first down. And again, good protection by that offensive line. Cross your fingers, guys. Trudeau is only a couple away from that record. Next one will tie it. He's back to pass. Pierce wide open. He's now tied the record. The next attempt without interception will set a brand new NCAA standard. And who would have thought a handful of games ago that we'd ever be talking like this? You remember this same guy, number 10, who the fans booed early in the season because he had 10 interceptions? The but same one that didn't run it in against Southern Cal. They're going to run out of the stadium. He's going to run for mayor next week. <laughs> It is second down and four. Well, this could be something. We might be watching history here. Trudeau, a draw play of sorts to Rooks. It's to about the 37-yard line. Mike Hammerstein and Andy Moeller on the stop for Michigan. 3.33 to go in this quarter. Michigan has always reacted again so well to the football. Mike Hammerstein, number 66, they're all-American candidate. 15 tackles for a loss coming into this day. Six sacks, not a bad day, and not a bad season. No, he's quite an athlete. By the way, Jack Trudeau has tied the record of Jerry Rome in Tulsa, set back in the middle 60s. And we know how football has become a passing game now, but I can't imagine any team that threw that much back in the middle 60s. This could be a record. It is. Jack Trudeau has just set a record with that pass. It's a standing ovation at Memorial Stadium. Congratulations, Jack. He's a fine young man. Well deserved. You want to talk about a comeback story? We're looking at one in the makings right now. And as a secondary thought, it is a first down. You know what? You can't help but be happy for him. Especially with this start he had. The drive continues, though. Trudeau in the middle to Anthony Williams. Williams getting very busy today for the 25 as Ivan Hicks makes the stop. Williams came into this game with only seven catches on the campaign, and he's already picked off four today. Jack reading the blitz, goes to the short man underneath Anthony Williams, and all day Jack has done an excellent job of reading those defenses. Kind of a peculiar looking picture, isn't it? Second down four for Illinois. Again, another drive and then works. The shuttle pass. Look out. That's an inner, that's, that's an incomplete, incomplete pass. Now, Mike, Andy Moeller may not realize it yet. I'm glad that Jack didn't throw that pass long. <laughs> Can you imagine the string ending on that? No. The shortest pass. But again, I think we've, we may be running that play a little too much because Michigan in the last two times have read it well. You'll see the man right there, number 60, Mesmer, coming in to make the hit on Thomas Rooks, but he did not go for Jack. He did not rush the passer. I tell you, if Mesmer would have gone for the ball, he may have picked it off. That's right. Third and four. Illinois, three out of five in third down conversions today. Trudeau, Pierce, it's a little bit too high. Defending that time, Greg Randall for Michigan. So do we see Chris White? We do. Pierce was open on the play, but Jack felt the pressure that time. He, he did not plan his feet very well. It was not a very well-thrown ball. Chris White having a good season. Hey, White, he's had a great career. Well, there's his range and accuracy from the distances. Let's see where Mike Giddings is going to spot it. He will spot it at the 33. That makes it a 43-yard attempt. From that range, Chris is three out of three for the season. The wind is at his back. There's the best shot in the house of it right there. It surely is long enough. It is no good. And for the first time this season, from that range, Chris White cannot cash in. Just a little off to the right. 
one minute, 49 seconds. Illini football continues after these local messages. Tackle play, Mike Side will team with Jim Grabowski. We're in a slugfest here. Nothing, nothing between the Illini and the Wolverines. First and 10 to the 26 for Michigan. Not much. Gerald White on the carry. It doesn't look like Bo wants to come out with anything fancy or down the field with a minute 41 left. He figures maybe we'll just try to run the ball. Well, the passing game hasn't worked well for him, Jim. Harbaugh is 0 out of 5 in his last attempts, only 1 out of 7 in his last 7 shots. So, except for that one long gainer to Jokish, which wound up being a penalty for too much debate, the passing game of late has not been good for him. Thank you, Professor. Look at those current stats with a minute and 40 to go in the half. In the half. Pretty equal ball game. Look at 95 yards passing by Michigan. That's a little unusual. And a second down and nine for the Wolverines. The 36 is first down territory. A flat pass. White gets by one man. Nice move by Gerald White that time. You know, the funny thing about what we're seeing in college football, except for more passing, is teams don't have an honest fullback anymore. Really, White was a converted tailback, so we're seeing a lot of speed from that fullback position. This is, a, this is just a screen pass set up to Gerald White. Out there in the flat, looks like he should be stopped right here, but good balance by the young man. Gets close to the first down. Yes, he does have the first down. Bob Sabring probably thought he was under a horse right there. He's going to kind of run over Trample, if you will. First and ten. Ball's down the 35-yard line. That stopped the clock in a minute 33 to go in the first half. Hardball. Intercepted almost by Swope. Jokic, the receiver. Greg Swope, I was reading the eyes of the quarterback. They were in a too deep zone. You'll see the fake handoff here, play action, in the top of your screen. Greg Swope coming in. Oh, Greg, you should have had it. Looked like Todd Avery got a hand on it, too, to slow it up a little bit. You know, really, it's a game of inches. And Hanging on to the football would have been a big turnover. Second down, 10. That stopped the clock in a minute, 27. Illinois has two timeouts left. Michigan all three if they elect to use them. Second and ten. Gerald White. No, Jamie Morris. Nice tight row back there. I'll tell you, that play was set up by a fine block by their tight end, Eric Caddis. He just crushed the outside of the uh, defensive line of Illinois. Just a pitch to the to the eye man, Jamie Morris, and look at he gets to the outside with a the guard leading. Boy, when that happens, you know you're going to pick up yardage. First down for Michigan. 24 yards on the afternoon so far for Jamie Morris. Five carries on the day. That 11-yard gain by far his best. He comes in averaging about five yards a carry. The Wolverines approaching midfield. The clock sits at a minute 20. Mr. Sebring this time. Bob, Bob Sebring making his first start since being hurt in Michigan State. Looks pretty good that time. Hurt his knee a couple weeks ago. Looks like it hasn't slowed down his momentum or his quickness. Let's see it. A draw play to Jamie Morris. Up the inside. Now dips it back to the outside. There's 31. Bob Sebring hanging on to the jerseys. Thank goodness they don't have tearaways. A lot of discussion as to what to do in this situation. Minute five to go in a scoreless first half so far. And second down so far in this game, it's been a pretty much of a run pass, run pass setup for Michigan. The last time at second down, the Wolverines ran for a first down. The time before that on second down in this drive, Michigan passed for a first down. And this time it's over the top. Nice catch that time. Good job by Jamie Morris. But it's not enough for a first down. Well, the Illini are giving the short stuff. They're going into two deep zones. Play action once again to Jamie Morris coming through the line. Now, he just follows right through the line, turns the ball up about five yards down the field. 
Good reception by Morris. Clock running at 43 seconds in the half. It is third and six. Harbaugh. Nobody's open. Finally, he finds John Fulcher. We've got a flag. Colasar down to about the 18-yard line. Well, it is going to definitely go against Michigan. Eric Kettis, the tight end, was downfield blocking on the quarterback. And that's a pick play. You just can't do it. Here's Harbaugh now running for his life. He's been pursued all, all afternoon down the field to Colasar. But what we didn't see on the play was Caddis, the tight end, blocking as the ball was in the air. And Michigan, one of the best teams in terms of plus turnover situations, like Illinois, took itself right out of a great scoring opportunity. It sure did. Because with Mike Gillette, you're looking at probably at least three points with 30 seconds before the half. Three nothing isn't much, but it's better than nothing nothing. Once again, Bo is letting the officials know what he thinks of that call. But I had my eyes right on Caddis at the time, and it was definitely a pick. Jim, have you ever played for a coach that purposely tried to intimidate officials <laughs> all the time? <laughs> One of the great ones I'd ever played for him was George Ellis. No kidding. Oh, his job was to officiate, to intimidate the coaches, or attempt to. And uh, Coach Lombardi wasn't too bad at it either. For some reason, I can't imagine walking over to a guy like Lombardi and telling him, sorry, 15 the other way, you're out of field position. Fourth and 22. Monty Robbins is running the ball. I don't think that was by design, but that is, might be a first down. He gets the first down. Was that by design? Yes, it certainly was by design. They wanted to, well, I would think, but I'll tell you, that was a heck of a risk with the field position they had. But I certainly think it was a call in the huddle, a gamble, but they do pick up the first down. We'll see, there he is, Robbins in pursuit of running, I mean, the, the line iron pursuit, but he dies for that first down. Big play by the Wolverines, and they have a chance to get on the board before this half is over. Michigan's having a hard time getting everybody into the game. First and 10 at the 41, 21 seconds, the clock running. A big rush by Gibson, he gets it away. Jokic has it, and out of bounds, that stops the clock at seven seconds. You see how important that gamble was by, by Michigan, surprised everybody. Now the play to Jokic, and they are definitely in field position for the field goal. And it looks like that's what they're going to right now. Mike Gillette is 12 out of 16 for the season. Ironically enough, he's missed twice from inside the 29-yard line. The spot will be at the 29. It's a 39-yard attempt. He's 6 for 6 at this range. It's up. Doesn't look very good. It's not. And two of the best field goal kickers in college football have both come up short from short range. Well, that wind really took the ball, kind of knocked it down and off to the right. No good. That coach that was talking to Mike Gillette, Alex Agassi, was an All-American in Illinois, and also an All-American at Purdue. At Purdue, three-time All-American. Three seconds remaining. Do you alley-oop it, coach, or do you just go home for the half and come back and try again? With three seconds to go, I think we just figure that the second half is a whole new ball game. We began at nothing, nothing, and we're still there. A lot of statistics between here and there, but no scores. Several opportunities. Down the ball. I like this formation. David Williams, the only back back. Jack Trudeau downs it, and we have seen a rock'em, sock'em first half of play. And that's the end of the first half of the score. Illinois nothing, and Michigan nothing. Jack Trudeau has been dynamite in the first half. You know, maybe more surprising to me, if you look at these statistics, is that in the first half, the Illini have outrushed the Wolverines. 62 yards to 54 for Michigan. Now, you told me that before the ball game, I'd say you're nuts. But it, it's been a one heck of a first half. And something else, look at the time of possession, Jim. I don't think anybody in, the, in any half of football has held the ball longer than Michigan. Well, that's correct. Normally, the, the Michigan offense is ball control, hang on to the football, don't give the other team an opportunity to get the ball. 
and, and this has been really a fine, finely played first half of football. And we'll be back with the second half kickoff after these messages from your local station. Deep for the Wolverines. He has it at the 5, up to the 10. Fifth up at about the 15. Good special team play that time. In this type of ball game, Will, those special teams are so important and a good play by the kick coverage team of the Illini, stopping them on the 15-yard line, stopping the Wolverines. This telecast is authorized under the rights granted by the Athletic Association of the University of Illinois and the University of Michigan. Any rebroadcast or other reproduction of the description and the accounts of this game without the expressed written permission of the Athletic Association of the University of Illinois is strictly prohibited. And it's first and 10 at the 16 now for Michigan. Jim Harbaugh now trying to direct the Michigan offense that has been shut out for the first time this season in the half. On the carry, Gerald White. Gerald White is making the most of a bad situation. And finally, Craig Swope catches him at about the 30. What a nice piece of running. Fine running by Gerald White taking it back to the inside. We'll notice, Will, that they came with their big back offense. Gerald White was lined up at halfback, and you had Perham in there. Now look at him cut back. As you said earlier, he is really a tailback converted to a fullback, but he can run in any position. Excluding the fake punt of Robbins, that is, has been their best rush from formation in this game. And it's a first down. Gerald White, a converted tailback, and was not the starting fullback in the beginning of the season, but beat out Bob Perryman. Colasar in motion. Again, that's Gerald White. And as you can see, White is running from the tailback spot. Scott Davis on the stop, as you'll see here. Now Gerald White, as you said, out of the tailback position. Back to the inside once again. Scott Davis, number 90, coming out of his defense men's position to make the stop. 14 minutes to go here in this third quarter. We're just underway. We had a, an exciting first half, but nobody scored. And Michigan has the ball for the first time in this half to open it up. Polisar in motion at number 40. Giving chase. Was Taggart incomplete. Eric Caddis, a tight end, was the intended receiver. And Will Eric Caddis was wide open, but a poorly thrown ball by Harbaugh, thrown behind Caddis for an incompletion. It looked like they were going to go to Jokic once again, but they went underneath the Caddis, as you said, wide open. But the one thing, Jim, we've not mentioned about the Michigan offense so far is that many of the games that they have won, their scores have come on short drives set up by the Michigan defense. And the Illinois defense has not given Michigan that kind of opportunity so far today. It is third down and six. Jim Harbaugh to pass again. He has time. Callers are wide open at the 40. Finally caught from behind by Lance Hartke. Will the Illini were in a two deep zone. Those two safeties have half the field deep. You'll see now Harbaugh going back and drop back. He's looking to Colasar in the seam of the zone and Colasar is wide open. The reaction of the safety, there is Ed White coming and now make, misses the tackle, but Harkey reacting back to Colasar to make the stop. But a big play by the Wolverines. And he's only a freshman. First and 10, Michigan's on the march. That's Perriman. Not much happening there. Yeah, good job by the defense. They closed down on the trap. Perriman had to take it to the outside. Cornerback was up to make the stop. Good defense. Mike White, one and four against Michigan as he looks on. Here's the handoff, led by 22, White. Good block by White, but Todd Avery, 43, came up and made the force. Todd Avery, one of the captains for Illinois in this game. The other captain is senior, Dave Ina. Second down eight. Well, Michigan has only had one other second down situation in this half, and on that, that particular play, Jim Harbaugh elected to throw it. And Jim, he doesn't like what he sees. The Wolverines come in with a 6-1 and one record. That is their best start since 1978. And the last time they had that kind of start, they wound up in the Rose Bowl and wound up with a 10-2 and two season. It is second down and eight. That's Polisar in motion. 
And adjusting with him is Bob Sebring. It's an option with no option that time. Good Ron job. Baum. Good job by the alignment. The option, a little reverse pivot by Harbaugh. Coming down the line of scrimmage, takes the pitch, wants the pitch, really, but good pursuit back from the inside. That was Ina initially, and then Ron Baum, number 94, finishing him off. Third down and six. The second such situation this half for Michigan. The Wolverines pass last time, so they're one out of one in that conversion department. Morris back in the game as they have the split backfield. Harbaugh just simply cannot get the ball to him. John Polisar was there, but the ball was not. It's fourth down. And here comes Mike Gillette to go for three. Once again, Harbaugh under great pressure, threw off his back foot, could not get anything into the ball. Ball comes up short, incompletion. Well, Gillette's a walk-on freshman. He earned his way into this starting spot, and has been a real surprise. He only needs four more field goals to top the all-time single-season record of 15 set back in 1982. But most important, a connection here puts Michigan on top. The wind's at his back. Here's the kick. It's plenty long, and it's good. And an 11-14 to go in the third quarter of this football game, the deadlock has been broken. It is now Michigan 3, Illinois nothing. Illinois football continues in a moment. Also failed to make a first down in front of the back of Illinois. It's first and 10 on the Illini 11. 6.13 to go in this third quarter of play. Illinois has not scored a point on a Beauchamp Beckler team coached by Mike White in five meetings. Hopefully that string will break for the Illini here. On the carry is Ray Wilson. Andy Moore makes the stop. Do you sense, Jim, that there's 70 some thousand people are ready to explode with excitement? Well, I think they'd like to find something to explode for, but I also sense that it's starting to turn into a Bo Schembechler game. Field position, they have three-point advantage right now, and the Illini have bad field position, and Bo likes to play from field position. It is second down and six. Illinois has shown pass for the most part in this entire game in second down. With this one, it's a run. And it's not a very long run at that. Mike Hammerstein in there on the stop. And that's also Andy Moeller again. When you play Michigan, you're running the football. You see a hole. You think you're going to get a game. But again, the linebackers react. Their down men react back into the hole, plug it up. And it turns what looks like should be a long game, turns into a very short one. It is third and four. Wyckoff, Pierce, Williams, the wide receiver. Keith Jones, the only running back. That is Jack Trudeau. That is a great catch by Wyckoff, and that's also an Illinois first down. On the stop, Gerald Rivers. Jack looking downfield, now feels some pressure, rolls out to the right, looks down, looking for a receiver, sees Wyckoff right along the end line. Good job, a touch on the ball, because he had a lofted over two linebackers, got the reception, big first down. Eric Wyckoff, a regular at the beginning of the year, now proves to be a valuable substitute in this game. It is first down and 10 for Illinois, trying to get into good field position. Jack Trudeau. The Cap Bozo. It's another first down. Garland Rivers makes the stop. And that's the first big game that Cap has had in some time. A oh, good concentration on the football by Bozo. That's in the seam of the zone. And you know that you're going to get hit immediately after reception. He concentrates on the football. Let's see it right there. In the seam right there. Look at him react back. Oh, good grab by Cap Bozo. Four forty-three to go in this third quarter. Now the Illini have a couple tight ends in the game, and they show run with Wilson. Look at this fella go! Cochran gives chase, and he has him at the eight. 
the longest run of the season and maybe in his career by Ray Wilson would not go down. I, I thought at first he, was, he ran past his blocker. Thomas Rooks was leading him in the hole. We'll see right now. Rooks going through the hole, leading Wilson. Good block by, in front by Tariga. Now look, he runs right past Thomas Rooks. But Rooks certainly helped right there. Takes it to the outside. Now it's a foot race. What kind of speed do they have? Brad Cochran, 30, finally runs him out of bounds. Big play by Ray Wilson. I can't believe he ran over top of Tony Gant in the middle of all that. Ray Wilson, nice numbers for the day, and a run like that sure does help the average. Longest run for Wilson before this play, for the season, 19 yards. Woo, we're gonna have a ball game here. <laughs> Most of Illinois' touchdown drives this season has come from the 11-yard line and in. So they've been here before. Of course, this is the time where the field is shortened up. Those zones of Michigan can get tighter. Now it's a test of the lines, the defense versus the offensive line. The last 10 times Illinois has been inside the 20-yard line of an opponent, Illinois has scored. Ray Wilson this time cannot get outside. A nice job that time by Garland Rivers. He just didn't read the cut. He had a block out and blocker out in front of him. Anthony Williams taking Rivers to the outside. Wilson took it to the outside. At this time in the field, you just got to turn the ball up. Go to the goal line. Pierce coming in. So is Wyckoff. The yardage for the two teams. Pretty close in terms of totals. The big number not on the screen is 3 nothing. Second down nine. The ball just outside the 10-yard line. Jack Trudeau has Pierce open. He's out of time. What a great job by Mark Mesner. His seventh quarterback sack of the season and the second for Illinois. The second Illinois has suffered this afternoon. Here's where Michigan comes up with their big plays. They come with the rush. Jack looking, can't find it. 60, Mesmer coming from his tackle spot, makes the sack, and that is number, sack number seven for Mark Mesmer. Stephen Pierce was open. He just ran out of time to get it to him. 3.09, the clock running in the third quarter. This marks the second time in this game Illinois has been close to the end zone. Now it's third down and 18. First down territory is about the one-yard line. Trudeau looking, looking, Pierce, incomplete. Well, Jack once again ends up on his back. Hammerstein got in just as Jack released the ball, but I felt a little nervous as he started feeling the pressure before it was really upon him. But he was waiting for those receivers to open up. Well, takes a little win there. Hopefully this man here will get the game even at three apiece. Chris White, like his counterpart, Mike Gillette missed the first attempt. Mike Giddings in the hold. That, that sack of Jack may become very important. It was a nine-yard sack, and it's going to be a longer field goal. In White's career, he's only one out of four against the Wolverines. It'll be a 38-yard attempt. It's a low liner for sure, and it's good. We got, a, we got a tie game with 2.47 to go in the third quarter. It almost looked, Will, like it was partially blocked. Someone may have got a finger on that football, but not enough. The ball just floated over the goal post. It doesn't matter how it gets over. It's a 3-3 three three ball game. And Chris White, who came into this game tied for the Big Ten scoring lead with Rob Howland of Iowa, is now one out of two, but most important with that field goal, it is now a 3-3 three three game. And as Jim had mentioned, the game was looking like Bo Schembechler football because the Illini continually had bad field position. But the way to offset that is put a good drive together, and Illinois did that. Well, it just feels like, you know, two boxers out there making their jabs, counter-punching back and forth, looking for the knockout blow, but neither, neither team can find it. Isn't it amazing, Jim, in five years that these two teams have played, and even the year that Illinois beat Michigan here, the Rose Bowl year, those are the first points a Mike White team has scored against Bo Schembechler in the third period. In the third quarter, yeah. Isn't that something? Well, I remember a game several years ago when they scored 21 in the first half or going to a look like a 28-7 lead. The ball was intercepted by Michigan, Michigan in their own end zone, and all of a sudden it turned around and it ended up 70-21 in favor of Michigan. <laughs> 
I wonder how many people bought tickets for the game films that week. <laughs> Say, what happened? 2.47 remaining in this third quarter. Chris White to kick off. Back deep for Michigan. John Colasar, number 40. And Jamie Morris, number 23. Colasar was on the right of your screen. Morris to the left. Hey, what? Michigan loses a lot of great players on defense, but they've got a lot of good players on offense coming back. 2.47 to go in this third quarter, and we're tied at three. Chris White, a nice kick. That's Morris at the two. Woo. I'll tell you what. I'm what a hit. He saved Keith Jones once again making the stop on the kickoff and there was a collision there I think Max McCarty's probably going to have a spot for him next week and is in the starting rotation in that uh, defensive secondary well Jim Harbaugh now has a 3-3 tie in his hands as he comes on this will be the third possession this half for Michigan 2.42 to go in this third quarter you can feel the drama beginning to mount here at Memorial Stadium. Jim Harbaugh. Almost intercepted by Todd Avery. And I got to tell you, 6'8", Paul Jokic took a shot there. He sure did. Greg Swope came in and really put a hit on Jokic. He hung on to the football, what looked like was going to be an interception because Todd Avery was short off his fingertips into the hands of Paul Jokic. Big play for the Michigan Wolverines. That makes it first down and 10. That is the sixth reception for Jokic. 130 yards on the afternoon. That's Kolasar in motion. The option, nice pitch to White, but White's got no option either. Swarming defense by the Illini. Covered the option well. A half a yard gain. Guy Tietenhiller on the stop. Look at this. Reverse option right here. Harbaugh reverses out. Wants to take it up, decides, no, I'm going to pitch the ball. Now Gerald White looking to get to the outside. There's Tietenhiller. Makes the first hit. Ed White, Tunker Jenkins, Jay Lynch, they're all part of it. It's apparent the Illini defense has figured out the option. Took a while, but second down nine. Harbaugh to pass. Big rush. Stephen Tiller had him in the grasp. They call it right down. It's a quarterback sack. You got it right there. Officials pointing right there. You are down. I tell you, it's either down or intentional grounding. Bo and there you go. Bo doesn't like the call at all. Let's look at it right here. Rolling out. Jim Harbaugh, under rush from the inside. That's Tifa Tiller, grab him by the jersey. He's pulling him down, he's got control. Harbaugh like, gets rid of the football, but the officials say, no sir, you were down right here. That's a fifth quarterback sack for Tifa Tiller this season. He leads the uh, Illini in that category. It's now third and 25. Michigan one out of three in third down conversions. Well, Jim Harbaugh has done a good job of escaping some of the rush, but can't do it all the time. Not at this level of football. Harbaugh to pass. Illinois in the nickel defense. What's happened? I think they had too much time. Harbaugh pushed his lineman up to the ball and says, we've got to get the ball off. Time ran out. The 25-second clock ran out. And I believe he'll go five yards more against Illini. Look at this shot. You see that? Shen Beckler next to a 6'8 receiver, Jokic. And Bo Shen Beckler is not a small guy. I keep thinking that Jokic ought to dribble the ball down this field. He did play basketball. I know, two years on the Wolverine basketball team. It is now third down and 30. The ball is at the 18-yard line. Jokic will be one of the wide receivers. John Colasar the other. Perryman 
and wide of the backs. That's Harbaugh to pass. Swope can't quite bring it home. Fourth down. Illinois should get it back in good field position. And once again, Guy T. Patiller almost got the sack, and he made Jim Harbaugh pay the price of getting rid of that football. 70,000 plus in Memorial Stadium. Another sellout here. And finally, the home crowd has something to root for. Darrell Usher will be back at about the 35-yard line to receive Monty Robbins' punt. You can see right down there, Robbins has not much room between him and the end zone. Illinois sets up for the return. A low-line drive to Usher at the 40. 45, midfield. 45, great return, and Illinois is on the move. The best field position the Illini have had this afternoon is given to them by an excellent run by Darrell Usher. He showed that that last time he fielded a punt, he fumbled the ball. He wasn't shy this time. He took it upfield, ran with abandon, and gives the Illini the ball on the Michigan 44-yard line. In the Illini's first four games this season, only three times out of 56 possessions did they take over the ball in the opponent's territory. In the last three games, Illinois started drives 10 times out of 40 possessions inside the opponent's territory, and this is one of those times. It is first and 10. Moving bodies that time. Mike Malloy on the stop, Brooks on the carry. And the clock is now running down as this third quarter is drawn to a close. And at the end of the quarter, it's Illinois 3 and Michigan 3. Before we begin the fourth quarter, let's take a brief look at the University of Illinois. Only nine yards and had to punt it back to Michigan. The Wolverines take over with 12.03 to play. John Colasar wide on one side, Paul Jokic on the other. Long count by Harbaugh. That's Jamie Morris. Morris somehow kind of maneuvers his 5 7 body through some pretty good football players. This guy, Team Miller, getting off the stack there. But well, Trudeau look, looks a little shaken still. Hey, he looks a little dizzy. They're talking to him on the sideline now. See if he has his wits about him. If not, we will see Jim Bennett. Second down, five. Michigan has been running the ball while it's second down this half. Clock running, 11.30 to go in the game. Both wide receivers to the far side. That's Colasar in motion. Jamie Morris. Wrapped up by Mark Taggart. Going to be close to a first down. It may be a first down. Good blocking up front by Michigan and a good lead block we'll see right here by 22. Gerald White out in front of Jamie Morris. There's the block by 22. Good cut by Jamie Morris for the first down. Talk about a contrast in the Michigan team. A year ago, Morris led Michigan in rushing with 573 yards for the season. He came into this game with 716 as a sophomore, but only 30, Jim, in this game. A week ago, he gains 179 yards. This game, so far, only 30. And that's a credit to the defensive head coach, Mike White. Of course, Max McCartney's done a good job of shoring up this defensive Illinois, too. From the eye, Jamie Morris. Greg Swope on the stop. There's the offensive football that we have seen so often by Michigan. Tailback offense, handoff to Jamie Morris, the I formation. Good cutback right there, good hole, oh, nice hole. Try to make a move right here. Greg Swope, maybe our surest tackler, comes up and makes a sure hit. In a tight ball game, when you see Michigan begin to grind it out, you can't help but look at the clock. Jeff Brown, number 80, who just came in, is the second tight end for Michigan. Eric Campbell in motion. Bob 
Perryman gets the first down for Michigan. And the clock still marches on at 10-13. As Craig Swope is on the stop again for Illinois. Well, it's that time of the ball game where you ask your defense to come up with the big play. They've come up with so many stops this afternoon, but you've got to find it inside yourself again. Go back one more time. We've got to stop them. These two ball clubs have two like opponents. Each team has played Wisconsin and Michigan State. Michigan beat Wisconsin 33-6 and shut out Michigan State 31-0. On the carry, Gerald White. Lance Harkey won't let him get out that time. And on the flip side of that, Illinois beat Michigan State 30-17 and Wisconsin 38-25. We'll see Gerald White being led by the guard. 67, John Vitelli. There's Tim Bork, number 46, finishing off. Well, it's second down and five, just shy of the midfield mark at the 49-yard line. Clock running at 9.29 now. Second and five. The 45-yard line in Illinois territory is first down territory for Michigan. There's John Colasar in motion. Our ball, bootleg type pass, he's going to run. Out of bounds and close to a first down. There's a naked bootleg. No one out in front of Harbaugh to block. He just sprinted for that yard marker, and he made it. First down for Michigan. Well, I've called the first down, but the officials haven't signaled it yet. They're calling in the change. Stops the clock at 9-10 on a cool afternoon here in Champaign, Illinois. He's got it. Well, I was right. By half of a football, but I was right. Well, you really can't say Illinois' defense hasn't played well in the 3-3 game, because they have. You hold a team like this to three points, you're playing super football. But it's got to stop them now. They're getting down into field goal range. The worst performance offensively, scoring-wise, Michigan has had this year is in the loss to Iowa. Final there is Iowa 12, Michigan 10. Bob Perriman. As now, Michigan, despite the good passing numbers, now going to the power game. Jay Lynch on the stop that time for Illinois. We're going to grind it out football. Hand off to your fullback pyramid. Pretty decent hole right there. And they have moved the football on this drive. This drive, Jim, is seven plays deep. All seven have been running plays. And every time they have gotten the first down, it's been a run on the second down play. So it's been runs for a lot of yards every time out. Now it's second down and four. That's Eric Campbell in motion. Gerald White, again, looks like he's got it. Michigan is getting about five yards of crack. His guy teeth until it makes the stop with some help by Ed White. Well, they're sending their man in motion, and we're covering the motion man with the linebacker. Then they're going back to where the linebacker vacated. You'll see a big hole once again. It's the inside man, Tifa Tiller, and Ed White make the stop. Ball resting at the 34-yard line. In a 3-3 game, you got to look at Mike Zuleka, place kicker. Michigan is now getting him in his lane. But the Wolverines are going into the win. It is first and ten. This drive is eight plays old, and it's all been running. And it remains on the ground. Gerald White on the carry. Well, they continue to do the same things. The man in motion and going back away from the motion man. We'll see again. Hand off to Gerald White being led by Perryman through the hole. This time, good defense by the Illini. This is one of the few times this year that Michigan really has pulled out Jamie Morris and successfully ran the ball in a critical situation without him. This is power football, second down seven. Hardball to pass for the first time in this series. Unbelievable play. Keith that Taylor. Great. Keith Taylor, a man that was injured twice his first knockdown of a pass this season, a great story. Let's see it right here. Rollout. 
Our ball to the left side, squares up his shoulders, looks downfield for Colasar. Now watch the play by Taylor. Number four coming in. There it is, right there. Breaks it up. Make sure the second hit on the ball knocks it loose. Third down and seven. Michigan only one out of four in third down conversions this half. Would you say this is a big third down play? Yeah, I would say this is a big third down play. And the first one in this turn drive. The 24 is first down territory. That's Gerald White. He's not going to make it. Maybe he does make it. He's there. I thought for sure Ron Baum had him, and he kept going. A great job of running that time. He just wouldn't Ron stop. Bomb, just great effort by Gerald White. And number 12, Pitch to the eye back. Number 22, White, going defense. to the outside. We'll see here. Now turns it up. Look, now bomb has got him right here. He's got him. Should have him. Hangs on. But watch this effort. Puts his hand down. Struggles. First down. Good run. The running game is in full gear right now. White, by the way, has carried the ball 12 times for 50 yards. Well, right there, the Michigan team is now beginning to look like the Michigan team of tradition. A lot of running. It's first and 10 to 24. John Colasar in motion. Gerald White is having his way almost untouched for the first three or four yards he has the ball. Lance Hartke makes the stop. Well, they're going to have to do some, some type of adjustment to this again. Wing back in motion. They're going away from where he was. White turning it upfield. They're outmanned. The Illini are outmanned on that side of the field. This play, this drive is 12 plays old. Any drive that goes that many plays his mistake point. Look what, look what it's done to the clock. Six, Six seven minutes eight. off the clock. That's Gerald White. The Ed White makes a stop, and if Ed White doesn't make the stop, it's six. The key man in this, this drive has been right there. Number 22, Gerald White, coming up with the big runs. And they are moving down into scoring territory. Look at the run right there. Ed White, 16, making a touchdown-saving tackle. The ball's resting just inside the 12-yard line, so Michigan can get a first down without scoring. Clock running at 5.45 to go in this game. And again, it's on the ground. Fumble. Loose football. It's loose. Who's got it? <laughs> Illinois has it. Oh, what a turnaround. <laughs> we talked about it. You run so many plays, you're mistake prone. Let's look at it right here. 22, Gerald White, who has done so well in this drive. 50 to board, Taggart and Baum make the hit. There's the ball, jarring loose, and who falls on it? I don't know, folks, but it was a line high. Bob Sebring is the man that picked up the fumble, his second of the year. The line high football continues after these local messages. Michigan. That is only Michigan's fourth mistake. In the last five games, Illinois has it back. That's Rooks at the 15, to the 17. A key fumble by Michigan allows the Illinois defense to dodge a bullet. And now at 5-12, Trudeau and company go to work. Roll out by Jack Trudeau. Rooks on a flat pattern. Good catch by Rook. Looking to pick up some good yardage. Back to the inside. That's Mallory on the hit, hanging on. And Thomas Rilks lurching forward for another yard. It is second down and two. Wilson and Keith Jones are running backs. Wilson has the ball. And that will be an Illinois first down. The announcers for today's game have been selected by Rasmus and Associates and approved by the Athletic Association of the University of Illinois. 4.47 to go in this 3-3 football game. 
We have said on more than one occasion, whoever has it last might win. And even though it's not a shootout, it might happen here. Well, this is such a key drive because the way Michigan's moving the football when they had it, Illinois may not get the ball again in this game. First down and 10. Jack Trudeau. Thomas Rooks. Andy Moeller is not a pleasant man, is he? Oh, what a play by Moeller. Inside linebacker, number 49. Came across the line of scrimmage, took on the blocker, and also took on the ball carrier. Let's see it right here. Hand off to Rooks. Watch number 49 come into play. Takes on that blocker and makes the tackle. Excellent play by Andy Moeller. Second down nine. Thomas Rooks alone running back. Jack Trudeau. Pierce. How did he hang on to that? Oh, he took a vicious hit from Ivan Hicks. And he jumps up and says, I'm all right, folks. Let's look at it here. Jack looking to Pierce. Pierce on a post pipe pattern right there. Ball's there. Watch this hit. Ooh, right in the face. But he, ha he hangs on to the ball. Good concentration by that young man, Stephen Pierce. Jack Trudeau on the day, 25 of 34 for 226 yards. First and 10, the ball now to the 35-yard line. Clock running at 341. Keep in mind, Illinois has the win to its back. Trudeau gets away from Hammerstein, gets it to David Williams, who's out of bounds, and close to a first down. The clock stops at 329 to go in the game. Brad Cochran on the stop for Michigan. Watch this play by Trudeau. There's Hammerstein, 66, right in his face. But he gets the ball off right on target. David Williams in stride, going for the first down, short by a yard. Second down and one. Do you go for the whole shooting match on second and one? Or you got to think we're in four down territory no matter what. Well, not yet we're not in four down territory. It's right on the 45 in the Lionite territory, that's for sure. Thomas Rooks. Thomas Rooks in Michigan territory. An Illinois first down. That will stop the clock while they move the change to 323. Good job by Rooks of finding any hole that was there. It was to the outside. Designed to go over the center. Dips it back to the outside. Keeps those legs driving. He's not going to be stopped by one guy. Scarcelli now coming in. Then Hicks. Good run by Thomas Rooks. This drive for Illinois is starting like Michigan's getting the first down in two plays. Play seven coming up of this series. Stephen Pierce. Stephen Pierce somehow gets around three people for a couple more yards. That was Andy Moeller down there for one. Jeff Akers for another. And also Garland Rivers. We're talking about three premier football players. Watch Jack now. Good look off by Jack before he went back to Pierce. Double hits on, oh, I'll tell you what, this is a ball game. Big time ball game. This game is what it was really billboard to be, tight to the end. I think the low score is a surprise, but it's been full of action. Rooks just takes aim at Mark Mesner. I think he's got it. I believe he has the first down. Good hard nose running by Thomas Rooks. Wanted to go out, but saw a hole inside and says, I'm going to get the first down, and he does. Kind of a lonesome feeling. You can't do much. There you'll see Gary Moeller on the right there giving the defensive signals. Clock running at 219 as Mike White looks on with his backup quarterbacks. Stephen Williams into the game now, the only wide receiver. As Anthony Williams and Cap Bozo are both in, look out. Almost disaster for the Illini. Fumble on the snap, but alertly, Scott Keyhole fell on it, and they pick up four yards on the three yards on the fumble. I think you can put that play in right after the uh, shuttle pass. <laughs> Let's forget that one. Here we see it right here. Fumble on the snap. Ball bouncing around. Jack trying to go for it. But Scott Keyhole, 56, alertly 
Props on that football. Clock running at 136 to go in this football game. We're tied to three apiece. Illinois and Michigan, neither one can afford to lose in a tight Big Ten race right now. Well, it looks, Will, like they're playing for the field goal. Once again, the pressure is going to go to Chris White. With a minute and 14 seconds to go. Third down now, three yards. Go on their own on the Wolverine 31 yard line. And that is confidence in your field goal kicker. Black running in a minute. Illinois with three timeouts. Michigan with two. That's still a pretty long kick. The ball at the 30 yard line. We're, a few, we're in 50 yard range if they were to kick it now. That's a long way. Jack Trudeau. Out of bounds in the 26-yard line. That stops the clock at 45 seconds. I have not seen such confidence in an entire football team like this the entire season. Well, it was a very interesting play, a bootleg. Here it is, the fake handoff to Wilson. Trudeau bootleg. Now there's a linebacker there, which we can't see, but he drops up. Susie drops up. Jack decides to run with it, go for the first down, and he's got it. 45 seconds on the clock. The ball is sitting at the 26-yard line. Whew. I'll tell you what. Can you feel the pressure building? There's Chris White warming up. He knows it's going to be all on his shoulders or his foot. Jack Trudeau to pass. A lot of time and nobody's open. There he goes. Mike Mallory makes the stop. He's now down to about the 16. Clock running at 33 seconds. That might be the last running play we see in this game. Roll out to the left side by Trudeau. He's looking. He's looking. Make sure there's a, a receiver wide open. No one's there. He's going to run one. Pick up what you can. He makes a eh, semi-good effort at a slide. The line I call a timeout as Jack Trudeau comes over. There's 21 seconds on the clock. And Jim, it's second down and four. You gotta be thinking three points at this stage of the game. I, I think what the Illini will do will try to get it in the field position. Run the ball to the right side of the field, get it in the middle of the field for White to get a good shot at the field goal. It's a game that's awfully important right now for both teams. Each team comes in with a single loss in the Big Ten. It is the belief of at least this broadcast team that you can't lose two and go to Pasadena, not in this conference and not this year. Absolutely right, especially when you have Iowa ahead of you with no losses in the conference, which, by the way, will be the Illini's opponent next week. What a game that could be. And imagine if you're Michigan right now. You've lost one time in a game that the defense that you employ does not give up a touchdown. They're now in the position of losing a second game without giving up a touchdown. And you imagine how Gerald White feels right now. Michigan going in for a touchdown. He fumbles the ball on the Illini nine-yard line, and the Illini march it down the field and put themselves in position to win this football game. We've got 21 seconds to go in this football game. Mistakes cannot be a part of this last play. It's Wilson and Rooks, the running backs. That's Wilson. Jim called it. The goal is for position. And you notice Ray Wilson hanging on to the football with both hands. He didn't want to fumble. He knew all he had to do was get position on the field. The clock is running at five, four. Jack Trudeau calls timeout. This is the second time this season. We've had a tie game with four seconds to go. And Chris White being called in. Boy, you just got to wonder how much one poor man can take. This is a replay of the Ohio State game. Absolutely, Will. Last play of the ball game against Ohio State. Chris White kicked the field goal to win it. This will be the last play of this ball game. He has the opportunity once again to put a big W on the scoreboard for Illinois. It's going to be a 37-yard attempt when Gettings puts it down. Chris White coming into this game was three out of four from that department in terms of yardage and connection. You gotta believe that Michigan is gonna come with everybody they can get on the field to get a good rush going. But the key is the distance and the win are in Chris White's favor. I also believe that just as the Illini line up to kick the field goal, Michigan will call a timeout, ice the shooter, keep them right. And if they do that, 
By the way, they do have two timeouts to go in this game. That would be an immediate replay, and as Jim called it, that's exactly what has happened. Todd Schulte calls timeout, and again, Chris White, the lonesome man, just sort of tries to stay loose in this cool out of air. Is that a lonely feeling out there? The Illini huddle off to the side of Chris White. He is standing by himself. Oh, I'm glad it's not me. Well, we talked about the wind being a possible factor early in the game as Mike White looks on. A man who is getting grayer as this season gets longer. His son has been a big part of his football program since he walked onto this field. And the great thing about Illinois, when the Illini work well, they have so many weapons in which to beat you. They've been able to throw, they've been able to run. The kicking game has always been good. And then the defense joined the party a couple weeks ago at Michigan State. And now the team we have seen play today in the last couple of weeks is the team we read about before the season started. Well, they have said that the Illini haven't played a complete football game. Certainly defensively they haven't, but today they have done it and done it in great fashion, holding a Michigan team to only three points. Well, this is it. Mike Gillings the spot. Mike Scully the snap. It is a 37-yard attempt. That picture will tell it. Victory or defeat right there. Or in this case, victory or a tie. There's four seconds to go. There's the snap. It's good! No! Well, it was partially blocked. The ball hit the crossbar and bounced back into the playing field. 